This is your last one. Yes. Yes. All right. It is 1030, Monday morning, July the 11th. Commission Court's going to go into a budget workshop. Let the record show Larry Hulsey, John Curtis, Danny Chambers, Kenneth Wood, Don Kranz are all present for this workshop. Brian, this will return it back over to you. Yes, sir. Uh, as the judge said, this is just our initial first shot across the bow, so to speak. This is... Seat belt uh, yourself in. Don't fall out of the chair. Correct. This is just to let you know where we were and what we have as far as when we had our meetings. If you'll first turn to the capital outlay request, uh, you'll see that... Uh, these are the requests that have been made by the various departments. Uh, emergency management, uh, since we have reinstituted that department, they have requested uh, two items there, uh, a brand new truck slash command vehicle for emergency management, and then they wanted a radio to go in said truck. So that particular department is requesting $56,000 uh, for those two items. Uh, the treasurer is requesting a laser color printer and then three 27-inch uh, computer monitors for a grand total of 2500 The tax assessor is requesting uh, carpet and flooring, carpet and or flooring, uh, behind her counter uh, and in those two offices, and then some security enhancements for her office. Both of those are uh, TBD. Uh, I just wrote down. Uh, don't really have an idea what those costs are, so there's really nothing I can budget for at this moment in time uh, for that. But uh, I think as we go through the way along the way, we'll get some bids on some on some new carpet or maybe some flooring or something behind the counter there. The district clerk uh, has requested a laser jet printer. This is a with the advent of the new system, uh, they're doing upgrades to their birth certificate system. It's switching from the old dot matrix printer. Now they have to have a laser jet printer to print these certificates off. So uh, she's asking for a, a laser jet printer. She's also asking for a new laptop, uh, $650 estimate for uh, the computer that she takes for county court. And uh, She's also asking for a lateral file cabinet that she's running out of room in one of her offices. Uh, so a grand total of $2,150. The JP's office, along with the uh, tax assessor collector, are also asking for security enhancements. Again, don't know the parameters of what they're exactly looking for, um, but we've just kind of, we, we made that list so that we would make that request known to you, you gentlemen. And so with the district county clerk, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Correct. She's had the same concerns JPs and tax assessor had. Uh, elections is asking for an office chair, $300. Uh, the extension office, AgriLife, uh, they're asking for uh, three items. The first two, uh, which is an HPZ book, notebook, and the, uh, the HD format projector, those are both cost share, meaning that AgriLife will pay half so those prices you see there are our half for the contribution of those. Uh, we get the asset when it's used up, and of course, Zach gets to use it the whole time in our county, but uh, AgriLife will pick up half of the uh, cost of those two things. And then he's also asking for a, uh, a cart slash dolly uh, that holds the projector up also if they have things delivered. Uh, it can also be a two-wheel dolly uh, to pull things in. The sheriff's office is asking for to replace the HVAC units on the jail. Uh, the uh, that's twenty-two thousand uh, dollars. They asked for some ventila a ventilation system for the evidence room. Uh, they're saying that uh, with the amount of drugs that are coming in, uh, it's it, it the, the smell is is wafting out into the offices. And uh, so they're asking for a separate ventilation system out of that room. We have the third of five taser payments that are in there. He's also requesting five additional tasers, uh, one for the jail uh, 
jailer's use, uh, two more for the SRO officers that are coming on. Um, I, have, I have all of that information here. Uh, four rifles for the SRO officers. The, the school is providing a gun safe for them. Uh, but they're asking for four rifles so that they can be located at the school campuses. They're also asking to trade in their existing 40 cal, uh, 0.4 cal uh, pistols that they're carrying in exchange for Glock 9 millimeters. Uh, the reasoning behind that, they say, is that the ammunition is cheaper. And secondly, that it's not as disruptive ammunition uh, when they're shooting. That the, the, the guns that they're shooting now can do a whole lot of damage if it misses its target and the 9 millimeters don't do as much damage. Their words, not mine. Uh, but the net with the trade-in would be $6,500. Uh, and then, of course, the three Ford uh, vehicles, the 135000 which this court already approved, uh, that will be coming out of the next year's budget. What about the software that we approved also? Will that be somewhere else on down the road? No, that actually needs to be added to this. Is that the software? I, I had that note, but I forgot that. I'm sorry. Because so that's the like what, software. 50, 160 is pretty good. 160,000 there. Back, back to the Glocks, how many are we talking about? Uh, you know, I think I got that in here, Mr. Brenner. You got it? I've got his original papers. Exactly. Uh, for his discussion. Uh, I just have to back into the number. He says 14,000. Hang on just a second. Let's see if I can find that sheet. I need to hear it, if you know. Here we go, Brian. Uh, I don't see a number. Total cost $14,000. pistol back 250 would be 7500 so maybe we'd Divide 7,500 by 250, what does that work out to be? I don't remember that being. No, we're talking about five and ten. We're talking about 30 guns, or what are we talking about? It's a bonus. It's about 30. 35. Hang on just a second. <laughs> there you go, right here. Because he said... What do you mean? Calculum? I'm looking for mine. There it is. So um, supposedly, they think they can... It's 7,500 by 250. Yeah, that's 30 right on the head. That's 30 weapons. And then we'll need to add the Zerker software to this list. Sorry about that. No, thank you. Uh, I had a note, and obviously I didn't look at that when I finished up. And that's an annual payment thing, right? No, sir. That is part of our initial purchase. If you remember, when we, when we purchased the Zerker software, there was a down payment. And then we were postponing until delivery. And uh, then they turned it on. And that was going to be in this next I thought it was going to be close to 200000 Yeah, you're probably right. Because this is about 370 380 all told. And I think we put down, what, 100 and. 1650 we have to look back on that. I, I've got a copy of the contract. So you're probably right. It probably is going to be close to 200 at the end of the day once they go live. And then it's so much a month or a year. It's, a, it's an annual maintenance agreement. However, their maintenance agreement is less than the uh, net data that we're paying for. So, And I've got that renewal here, too. So We'll take about three folks out, and we'll put one contract in. So we're adding another 200 to this? To the sheriff's office, yes, sir. I told you to put your seatbelts on, didn't I? <laughs> Set that. Fire department, um, they're requesting a new fire engine. Uh, uh, estimates, uh, current today costing is 555000 uh, 18,000 brush equipment. They want the second uh, generator. Uh, last year they had requested two. They got approval for one. So now they're asking for the second one. Uh, 9,000. Uh, continuation of replacement of SCBA equipment, 36,000. Uh, new helmets, 12,000. And to expand the storage area of the building, uh, uh, 9,000. And this is probably not time to bring it up because it cut it down in half. The engine for five hundred fifty-five thousand. You're looking at like two year 
I'm thinking probably three. I'm thinking probably three. I would, you know, as we do our trimming, I would probably suggest that we keep it the same as a ladder truck payment was. Okay. Uh, what what one of the options would be is, is twofold, basically. Uh, you know, that we go ahead and budget for it, much like we do the golf course and things like that. And we, we actually transfer that to a text pool and let that over the course of two or three years accumulate. And then secondly, you know, the fire department does collect donations from uh, the residents. You know, we need to maybe par partake in some of that. That doesn't come to the county. That all goes to their volunteer account. Uh, you know, either we do some revenue sharing, uh, matching grant. Uh, I can see behind you. You can't. Sorry, I need a big mirror up here. What's that? <laughs> no, you're all right. So, Go somebody ahead. getting killed back there? Not yet. You know, uh, revenue share. Uh, maybe that's where the helmets go. Uh, something like that to to have the. Uh, I think that he, excuse me, I think you do buy stuff with the uh, with money, don't you? We use a lot of that money for county equipment. That's what I was thinking. It mainly supports the volunteers, um, paying for their Christmas banquet, um, buying food that we, we front the money on food and stuff, and then we get reimbursed on the county on, on some of it other than training. Um, but if we, yeah, if we, if it gets too high, then we'll use that money. Like we use some of it toward the hovercraft. We use some of it toward uh, uh, one of the brush trucks. The uh, the road and bridge. They requested uh, two Swinson tailgate sand spreaders. They're asking for a, a new truck for the mowing department. This is all going to change. Huh? Oh, absolutely. This oh, is, yeah. Uh, 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 Chevy 4x4 half ton truck and then a Ford dump truck. The Expo Center is asking for a stall vacuum. Oh, dump truck's not in my Yeah, it is on top of the top center. There you go. <laughs> uh, Expo is asking for a stall vacuum and then some, the security cameras that we removed from the uh, security bid uh, 48000 Golf course uh, maintenance. Uh, Jeff is asking for a new pump station uh, for the Lakes course. Uh, we have a number of estimates here, but I'm, I'm trying to go worst case scenario here at 215000 He's asking to rebuild the maintenance well house for $2,000. And he's got some lovely pictures if you're interested in looking at the pictures of what he's wanting to do or what he's wanting to replace. Uh, the tri tow trailer, thirty five hundred. A portable generator for fifteen hundred. Two backpack blowers, eight hundred dollars. He's asking for a, a TV that's internet, Bluetooth enabled, so he can do training with his men. Uh, Twelve hundred dollars. Uh, a John boat with trailer and electronic uh, electric mower uh, motor, three thousand dollars. And I have a question about this NSN contract renewal. We've been having these every year, but he did not submit it, so I need to verify if he if this is not something he needs anymore. The pro shop, every year they request for new carpet in the pro shop. Uh, he's requested for a freezer, uh, scoreboards. Uh, I've put in there 10 new carts, and we'll explain that a little bit. And, of course, we have the, the, the final golf cart payment. Um, in our discussions with, with Duff, um, he was already laying the groundwork for a complete fleet replacement of golf carts, which I questioned because when we looked at these carts, if this court remembers, we, we were anticipating a good eight years minimum before with, with the life of this fleet. And, um, and so I was hesitant to even explore this, and I certainly did not want to come back to the court with, with a $600,000 purchase of, of additional fleet golf carts. Thank you. And, uh, you know, during the year we have some tournaments that do require um, the rental of short-term uh, short rental of additional parts to our fleet. So one of, the, <clears throat> one of the options that I'm proposing here is that we budget to purchase 10 carts probably sometime around March which is right, right as our busy season. So as we're going through these big tournaments, our fleet increases from 120 to 130. 
Then, by the time we get down to the end of July, when our when our uh, the heat and things like that, our, our our play is dropping off, then then the maintenance department would then cull out five carts maybe that are maybe our worst performers, and then we sell those individually. Um, there's always a ready market for gas carts, and with the gated neighborhoods within 100 miles of here. I think a a ad on Craigslist or eBay or whatever for a a uh, well maintained gas cart, and then that way we've we've netted our fleet has now netted 125. I think we could probably get about 3,500 dollars a cart selling these gas carts, um, and then the following year we do the same thing. We bring in another 10, and we we then start weeding out our herd. So that we're never having to sit there and look at the prospect of buying 120 again in our lives. So, and then we always have these new carts being intermixed into our fleet. So, um, what year are we into these carts? This is this will be year five. That's what we their cars. And they're supposed to be in, I think, seven. But Without remember the the you know. These aren't the electric ones. And I was assured by everybody from Yamaha on down to our employees that the useful expected life of these carts were eight plus years. So I'm, I'm holding them to that. I'm, I'm not interested in replacing the fleet simply because it's, quote, time. Uh, you know, yes, we have wear on them. Yes, we have to replace tires or windshields. But that's with use. And, and so... You know, I'm again. Uh, but anyway, that's yeah. that's my uh, that's my uh, two cents on that one. Uh, so we're talking about six thousand dollars a piece. And that could be worst case. We purchased the other ones for forty nine hundred. In fact, forty nine fifty is what we purchased the other cars four or five years ago. I haven't even taken the step to get a price on ten. Now, certainly, I wouldn't get as good a price as I was getting with one hundred and twenty. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking that six should probably should do it, um, and then of course this doesn't even anticipate the three thousand to thirty five hundred that I think I can achieve by selling the five mm-hmm. uh, coming back. So uh, well, those carts that we that large bunch we bought, we haven't had those four years yet, have we? We're entering year five, yes, sir. We're in year five. This is the this is the fifth payment, and and yes, sir, and and so that's that's again why I was I was reluctant, and, and I think the judge can can tell I was a little stronger than reluctant. I you know there was just no way. You insulted one person. Yes, sir, I did, and um, but there's just no way that we could. What was their reasoning, folks? Like time, and and no, that they're having well, just. Some that's reason we went with gas carts because it's going to last I agree longer with you. in time. Where tires and and th- you know and and I'm, I, that 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 didn't really make much of a difference to me. I mean, I can understand that some have have been flipped, some have had some, uh, some have run into the lake. Uh, you know, so that's why I think we could probably call out five to sell. And, you know, the cost savings there would be the, the money I get back from set, selling them, and I don't have to rent it during our busy season. Yep. So, anyway, just just a submission. Uh, 448, we're still working with Eddie, uh, but I did want to go ahead and put some numbers down um, into his department for IT. If you remember, Eddie just came on board uh, June 1. So, uh, wanted to go ahead basically as a... As a uh, uh, a place saver uh, to because I know we're going to have some additional expenses now that we have our we're hosting our own network again, not in the data center. So we're going to and there may be some things he doesn't know that he doesn't know that he's going to need. So uh, I just didn't want to be stuck with with nothing there. Uh, I'd rather come back with cuts than to have to come back with increases. Okay. Now if you'll switch over to the other report. Uh, we can kind of go through this, and, and again, I'll, I'll tell you that I have not changed anything with relation to staff and or the added personnel that have come uh, through the request. 
I have asked the treasurer to, uh, you know, after we went through this salary survey, and there was such a big jump that had to be made, a couple of you came to me individually and said there has to be a better way uh, to do this, that there needs to be some sort of a COLA or some sort of an adjustment that we can make small along the way. Uh, so I turn to um, the uh, Social Security to see what they're doing. Um, starting January 1 of this year, 2018, Social Security did a COLA of 2%. Um, obviously, you know, they follow a, a calendar year. So that would be my recommendation just as a starting number. And so I've asked the treasurer to, to rework our step and grade system, assuming a 2% change. Um, so that it just simply, the, 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 the level of the, of the bay goes up 2%. And um, that takes care of employees. If you also want me to factor that 2% at an elected official level, we can do that as well. But, you know, right now I've only asked her to, to look at that on a uh, per employee basis. And we have not dropped those numbers in there yet. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I will tell you that I've uh, also done is uh, when we look at this is TCDRS. Finally, some good news that has come down for us. Um, if you remember correctly, our rate currently is the 15.92%, uh, making up for some losses in the retirement account and also uh, for some adjustments that we've made. We've been notified that starting in January of 2019 uh, that our rate will drop to 15.44%. So finally, we're seeing an arch. However, I'm recommending to this group that since we are currently uh, – paying a blended rate of 15.79 this budget year, that we maintain that simply because that will help push down that unfunded pension amount that we have on our books. Um, it's already something we budgeted. It's already something we're, we're irked with, with dealing with. And, it's, and I've run the long-term projections, and it really does make a difference on our unfunded pension liability and gets us in a better spot. And we so, talk about this every year. The buybacks hurt us to a degree several years ago. They allowed people to buy back in, and, and we're still making up for that. Correct. And, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah, we do nothing on cost of living. The, the next change that I'll, I'll float out to you, and it, it's, it's a costly change. Um, of course, nothing's costly in the standpoint of TCDRS world because they say, oh, it doesn't cost anything now. It'll just cost us for the next 20 years. It's like a house loan. Um, is our, our plan does not allow for a lump sum distribution upon retirement. Um, and a lot of counties are looking at that, making that election. Um, you know, it, it really is something I think we need to consider uh, given the age of our retirees. Um, this will allow them to, you know, with, with our retirees, if they've been here a long time, um, their options of retirement are whether you get the, the, the different selections for your life, your, your spouse's life, or a guaranteed 10 years, or, or whatever. You know, if you're in, if you're say in your 70s uh, or beyond, you know, none of those, uh, none of those uh, options are really particularly attractive, especially if you're wanting to leave some of this to your heirs. But a partial lump sum distribution would allow that because then you could take that lump sum and roll it over to an IRA account and therefore leave it to your heirs where, you know, if you if you pulled an option that didn't really work out or max 10 years, I mean, you know, if, if you've worked for the county 30 years, you know, that 10-year option really isn't going to, that 10-year guarantee is really not going to make a, a whole lot of difference. So. Uh, it's just something to consider. It's not a change I'm asking for this year because it will affect our rate. But two or three years down the road from here, it's something that I'll bring back. Would that be like a partial uh, payout, like you get a certain amount a month, but then you also get a certain amount up front? And yes, you sir, invest because that? That, that partial lump sum, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think it's the money that has been 
put in. It's not the county's money. So the so county, retirement check would still be coming from the money. Just a account. smaller amount. Okay. But you'll you know be able to take out right. you know hundred thousand dollars and put it into an IRA or something. So that's an acceptable method with with the retirement system. Yes, sir. It's it's an option. It, it certainly is an option. We just we just always said no. And, uh, and they even on their site, they have it there. It just says on our particular, if we just don't offer, it says not offered. Absolutely. And, and a lot of counties have been doing some, I say a lot. I've, I've, I've been talking with three that have made that change this year. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and the whole rationale behind it is exactly the same for mine, is their aging workforce, you know, being, you know, it's not unusual to have somebody in their 70s or beyond still, still working or serving in elected capacity. And, you know, this makes it a little bit more. Uh, well, right now our best option is, is a 10-year, right? That's correct. 10-year guarantee. You know, and. Uh, uh, that lump pal looks pretty good, though. Yeah, that lump sum it looks real good. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's certainly an option that we can consider. Again, something that we could do for our employees that won't necessarily cost a whole heck of a lot. So those are the things I try to look forward to. And excuse my ignorance, how does that help us in the long term as far as funding? Because it's already funded, so how does that work for it us in the long it term? Will, it won't, it won't impact any of that. No, sir. Because what, what they take out is, is their not, money. Is their money. Right. And it's not We're funding long term retirement. Sir, it may help in, in a, they might retire on here. Go ahead and get out. Take it might. It might. Uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's certainly, it, it's just another option. It's another option. Uh, now, if you'll look, uh, starting with the transfer station, uh, we have got, uh, back this out just a little bit. If you'll see, the first column is what I'm, what we're, we have right now I'm proposing for the coming year. The second column is the original budget that was approved uh, by this court. The third column is the uh, the amended budget, the, basically the net after all the budget transfers that we do. The fourth column is the year-to-date results this year through the end of May. And then the next two columns are the uh, the, the, annual, the actual end-of-the-year results for the previous two years. Uh, sorry for those in the gallery. If I, if I expand it out, it will be absolutely useless for you to see all those columns. So I'll just concentrate on the three columns there. Um, and then I'll identify anything that, that really we can uh, maybe talk about here uh, that might need to, to be. Um, transfer station, I'm leaving. Uh, we really, you know, we've changed the direction of what that transfer station is as far as charging. Um, we've got an early indication of what last month's collections to the county will be, and that was... A little bit north of 5700 5700 for the month. Uh, coming the check in. should be to you hopefully the next day or two. Perfect. Uh, so we'll be able to see how that levels out through the rest of the year. Certainly we have another uh, line item. I have seen, however, that the, the uh, fuel expense for the month of May decreased significantly compared to the previous months. It dropped about 25% So for that uh, tub grinder. So that, you know, we, we are achieving the desired results of what we're looking for there. Uh, library, uh, Peggy has asked for a $1,000 increase on her, her books, uh, purchases from $20,000 to uh, $21,000. Uh, uh, we did, uh, we, uh, that's pretty much the only big change that she had there. Uh, building maintenance, uh, and again, these are all uh, net of any type of changes to salaries. Uh, Hang on just a second. I we got a question from the gallery, as you call them. Yes. Did, did you ever make a decision on the genealogy or the ancestry? Uh, Sarah or someone's going to look into that for us. I've got us. that actually in the genealogy budget. Oh, okay. I've got that in the genealogy budget. Uh, building maintenance, nothing really changed there. Uh, of too much consequence, as you can see. Emergency management, we are, uh, one of the proposals that was done on emergency management was to actually put the payroll into the fire department since uh, Brian kind of serves two roles as an assistant chief and as the emergency management coordinator. So with a clear understanding that even though he is assistant chief, he answers to the county judge, 
Um, but we've moved his payroll into uh, 429, the fire department. But we left these items that are clear emergency management expenses uh, for those type things. Um, the $5,200 for uh, dues and publications uh, is 5000 for COG. Uh, COG is charging us 5000 for our emergency management department, basically. Uh, so, and we've been getting it for what, how many years now? Yeah, a lot. We've never paid it before, but they're, they're popping us. What do we get for that 5000 uh, your guess is as good as mine, sir. Uh, Brian, do you want to go into that? I've got a list. I should have brought that with me. I can email that list to you. But we, we do get something. Yes, sir. Uh, we had a major incident here and needed extra staff. They'll send people down to help run the EOC or the POD sites and things like that. And no disrespect to our previous folks, but until we had Dwayne and Brian in these places, it never was really utilized like it should have been. So we never paid that 5000 Walter didn't. Mike didn't. Now we're in a position where we're actually utilizing the situation. Dwayne and Brian are using them. And as we're using them, they're beginning to wonder where the money's at. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If we get uh, some money from the plant for emergency, yes, fifty thousand. Could we use that for this furniture and equipment? Absolutely. The plant. Yes. The plant has made uh, very clear to us that they really don't want to get into the nuts and bolts as long as it has an emergency management well, connection. They're fine. Yes, and they have no no discretion. Yes. Uh, auditor's department, uh, we've kept uh, everything the same. Uh, treasurer, uh, with the, uh, we had to go up on computer maintenance. Again, we got our renewal from uh, net data. Uh, so we're working through that. And then uh, her particular uh, two requests for the monitors and the color printer. Tax assessor collector, uh, we she made a request for her seminar expense to be increased uh, from the 3,200 to 3,800, and uh, we've gone down on her telephone expense, uh, and then uh, and then uh, this computer maintenance of 1750 that is for that third station that we lease from TxDOT. Uh, that according to uh, to our tax assessor has proved invaluable at certain times. Uh, haven't gotten the final number yet from CAD on their budget yet, so uh, I've still got that plugged at 195600 That may be my fault. I don't have the thing to County attorney, uh, we were able to uh, he had requested uh, some changes, and, and his <coughs> primarily went to, went down, uh, and uh, primarily in the outside expense uh, went from twelve thousand down to seventy five hundred, and uh, but his computer maintenance went up for his particular modules that that he utilizes through his office. Non department. Uh, Everything kind of stayed the same with the exception of uh, MHMR. Uh, we have removed that funding, uh, which was $13,200. County judge, uh, everything stayed uh, the same. Good name. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Clerk's office, uh, we, uh, there were a couple of changes that were requested by Michelle, uh, primarily in records management. She requested an increase from 25000 to 36000 And uh, she also requested uh, a, a large increase on printing. Uh, the state uh, has pushed down uh, a new requirement that is kind of double fund, uh, double uh, bladed in this that uh, these uh, birth certificates and death certificates all have to be printed on this special paper and the special paper has to already be pre-printed and it only can be purchased from one source and um, so uh, it's another state joke yeah I'm trying to figure out whose brother-in-law owns the paper company but uh, uh, 
but it all has to be done. And and part of the security is that they supposedly uh, destroy the template after they print our order. And so every time you reorder, you have to pay for this template to be redesigned. Again, 500 which, bucks for each template. Which I'm sure they go back into the locking Ziploc security cabinet to get the one that they, said they destroyed that charges $500. Does she get reimbursed for anything like that? No, sir. No, sir. Unfunded mandate. Not only that, the, the clerks association is really fighting, um, you know, pay attention at your conferences because the state is now wanting to take our records and sell them. So our county records, um, you know, part of this being online. So now the next step is the state wants to then sell those records. So our county real estate records and things like that, and it's going to turn into a money stream for the state. And, uh, you know, our clerk and as well as our position is that those belong to our taxpayers. And, uh, but I doubt we'll lose, I doubt we'll win that battle. But, um, the judicial judges stayed the same. Uh, with JP, uh, nothing really much, uh, changed there. Uh, with the exception of the, had no particular, uh, Equipment number there, but that's because they're asking for some security enhancements, and we don't know a number yet. Constables uh, went down, uh, and I will tell you that the, the, there were a couple of changes on the clerk and the judge. I had to put in there, as well as for precinct two and precinct four, money for bonds. And I need to do that. put that in there. And also on the tax assessor collector, she brought up an interesting uh, issue. She is requesting for her deputy to be bonded. Um, uh, and she can, she can enlighten you a little bit more, but supposedly under the Constitution, if, if she, if something were to happen to her demise and, uh, and we lost our tax assessor collector, we could not collect taxes until a replacement was appointed and bonded. So uh, by having the deputy bonded would allow that office uh, a continuation plan. So she is requesting for her deputy to also be bonded to meet the state statutes. Did y'all ever figure out if it's going to be year by year or term by term or how did y'all? I your prices on both. If there's something else I have got to bring up on the bond subject. It says that my bond to the county should be, I think it's 10% of the net taxes collected last year. Well, I don't collect property taxes, but I do collect a lot of fees that I think the 5000 is probably not enough. And I did a survey with some counties that don't collect, and most of them are doing the max, which is 100 I was going to get prices on that, too. Just something to think about. Um, jury court coordinator. Um, we've got that appointed attorney. We've, we've maintained it to 60000 Been lucky there. Juvenile probation, uh, we're, we're really having a uh, uh, very fortunate year. You know, juvenile probation is one of those that's like autopsies. You really never know how to plan for that. But I'll tell you that we've, we've had a very fortunate year. We do, however, have to keep funding up uh, to maintain our, our amount of contributions for to get the state funding. Uh, adult probation. Uh, again, we've, we've kept everything the same. We're charging half of James Allen's salary to the adult probation. Uh, this was a change down. Uh, county attorney took us from on the law library from 19,000 to 9,000. Figured a less informed citizen reads better, I guess. So. No, he's just been able to rework the subscriptions and, and get, a, get us away from uh, actual paper books and more electronic. The uh, Committee on Aging has requested an increase of $10,000 from 252.8 to 262.8. Uh, 
in response to a continuation of decreased funding from state levels. And so she's asking. Elections. One of the changes here that we've made, probably the biggest change, notwithstanding the $300 office chair, was if you remember in prior years, the assistant salary was split 85% to elections and 15% to commissioners. And the judge and I, in consultation with others, thought it'd be best to move that assistant out of the commissioner's office and assign her directly into elections. So now elections is going to have, obviously, an increased expense for taking 100% of that salary, but the corresponding reduction at the commissioner's office level. Child welfare being the same. Personnel director. We had some cost savings there. Extension office. Everything pretty much stayed the same there, with the exception of his equipment request that we talked about, two of which were cost shared through Agri-Life. You said those numbers reflected the only our portion? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Historical commission. Kept that the same. Of course, we're required by state statute to have a historical commission. State offices stayed the same for the game wardens and DPS troopers. The sheriff's office has requested an increase in training from $25,000 to $28,000 in anticipation of having the new SROs that we need to do additional training. I know you didn't have time to do this, Joe Round Brown, but we discussed, and we ended up being put at the bed, on how we're going to break out the employees as far as the line items with the employee versus the amount. What we can see, not just in the sheriff's office, but everybody's office. I know it's going to lengthen this. It will be a separate schedule behind it. Cool. And what the judge is talking about is we will have amounts that will be associated with actual employee positions. Right. It won't have names, but it will be like, you know, whatever you want to call it. Deputy investigator, clerk one, clerk two. And so you will see what makes up those numbers. Instead of when you see just 12, you'll actually be able to go see where that 12 is going. So it will be a subsidiary schedule behind it. I had to increase their insurance a little bit for their property insurance. I was able to take a little bit of reduction off their utilities from 65 to 60. But as we discussed, I need to add the worker onto there. Floor 29, which is the fire and EMS, like we discussed, this is that new position that we took there and added. I put the fire assistant chief slash EMC with code number 429102. Road department. One of the things I had worked and discussed with Brady, and you're going to see in the final budget, I left it because we haven't dealt with anything payroll-wise, is we're going to shrink this. I asked why do we have line items for road maintenance precincts 1 and 3 and then precincts 2 and 4. Because we're on a unit system, I asked him if there were employees that only worked for precincts 1 and 3, and he said no, they work on whatever is needed. So this budget became way too cumbersome. So we can shrink this up to have road employees, and then we can also have the mowing crew, utility people, or we can have just one line item, whichever you would prefer on that. Yeah, because it's confusing when you look at it. It just narrows things. Right. You would think you had 16 employees, you had six dealing with 16. 
So what 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 would your recommendation be? One line, two lines? Uh, I mean, but, oh yeah. Uh, We'll, we'll keep out the, the welder and keep out the sign and, and, and that that type. I'm primarily meaning the Well, we've got mechanics and we've got road and we've got mowing. Crew mowing. So it'll be at least three probably. Right. Well, and we'll keep the welder out, a uh, welding line item for, for that one, and then the signs line item. But, yeah, so I'll, I'll keep the mowing crew separate from the road hands. And... But we'll, what will be gone will be all that precinct one and three, right. precinct two and four, uh, and then part time for each one of those precincts. I mean, we'll just have one part time line. Uh, be a little, little bit easier to track some of that. It's just one of those things I think that's just carried over with time. And we can clean this up a little bit. Sure. Um, you saw the. Uh, the requests that were made there for his uh, uh, fixed assets. Um, uh, precinct, uh, the commissioners, the all of the commissioners have uh, All the commissioners are the same with the exception of in precincts two and four, we increased the seminar expense and also put a, uh, an amount in there for a bond. And then, as you know, Precinct 2, uh, road materials is at 105, where the other three precincts are at 80. Commissioner's office, uh, nothing really significantly changed there, except the exception of the before-mentioned taking the secretary's 15% off of that department. Council 2. Uh, exactly identical to Constable 1. Landscaping, uh, kind of different change here. Uh, reduced that. Uh, I did make a salary change there and reduced it down to just one employee at the top. Uh, removed all of the part time. Uh, there was a token amount uh, for premium pay. And then I created a line item uh, down in line number 443 414 called outside services for $50,000, which is the uh, the outside mowing company uh, that we hired. I also, with uh, Brady's uh, help, we kind of estimated down things like uh, repair parts and supplies to landscaping dropped from 8,500 to 4,000. Um, we kept the chemicals and fertilizer the same, but we did reduce uh, gas and oil from 4,500 down to 2,250. Um, you know, in anticipation of not needing, uh, if we're not working as, as many pieces of equipment, hopefully we'll do that. Should be should be better than that. Exactly, and, and, and you know, this is a this is a, a, a an estimate obviously um, there. Genealogy. Um, like uh, Paula mentioned, uh, the only real significant change there um, is that I put $1,500 under dues and subscriptions. They are requesting a, a bulk government subscription to Ancestry.com uh, so that residents can come in and instead of buying their own subscription, they can come in and utilize uh, our system uh, to find out that they're you know, to what scoundrels they're related to in history or, or whatever. I'm, I'm quite afraid to check who mine are, so um, anyway, um, even with putting that 1500 in there, we do, you'll see that the total expense dropped from last year 2870 to 3850 simply because we no longer have that building uh, across the way, so I don't have any utility expense. Um, you know, don't have any uh, insurance expense for them. Uh, really could uh, they just have a phone that's there and I probably could even get down with building repairs although I kept money in there for their little area in case something damaged inside their area would be uh, fair to charge Peggy for that so uh, anyway so their budget has now dropped to 3850 with that subscription should you choose to, to authorize them to do that do they get donations of any kind if we did 50-50 uh, very few donations come from here. 
Maybe you should direct it. So we dropped it around $5,000, a little less than $17,000. Oh, yeah. And quite a bit since 16. Yeah. Where did it spend all that on 16? Roof or something? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Lots Where? of toilet well, paper, paper towels. We had a building. We had six dollar coffee a month. Yes. We got print books. Wow. Mm-hmm. We had trimmed that one at Bonds. Yeah. Yes, sir. That was a good move. Yeah. So, and getting rid of the building also uh, helped. First to many, hopefully. Uh, computer, uh, excuse me, community center. Um, utilities, I had to go up quite a bit on that. If you can see, we had thirty-seven fifty budgeted, and our utilities are coming up uh, much higher than that. Uh, I don't know if it's people running the air conditioner keeping the doors open at the community center or what, but you can see that our through May thirty-first uh, number is at thirty-four seventy-eight, and we still have the rest of this budget year to go. And we had, and this number, the 3478, does not even take into account the uh, hottest part of the summer. Well, the, the actual um, 17 and 16 wasn't near that. Correct. Well, well, we had 3886 and, and 16, 3383. So, I mean, it does vary, obviously, with use. And this is probably not a fair question on the spot. Did we know what we're bringing in on that building that we're charging for? That uh, makes an answer. How are we offsetting our? Expenses, are we? It all goes into our rent line item. Okay. Uh, we would have to break that out. Uh, you know, certainly. I was just wondering because I know we're using it a lot more, even though we start charging for it. It gets used every it week. It is used so more though. I think in charging. the future we need to break it out where we can see. Huh. Where we're it's staying. amazing. I know. I guess it's worth more to them. <laughs> now they're going to use the AC on there. Four or five years ago, when the air conditioner wasn't working, it was in July. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we can create a separate line item on our revenue sheet for um, a rent community center. I mean, it certainly. Well, can. I just think it needs to be broke out somewhere where we can see where we stand. Well, it's over. a different fee. So, I mean, you could go and look at the $25. Sure. I know, but. It'd be easy to. Yes. If we, if, we, if we do a report on it some way, it'd be easy to we find need, it we out. Need, we need to know because the budget's now 8500 and it yeah. was 63 Yeah. And if it gets so out of hand, know. we need to really look at that $25 fee. That fee may need to be adjusted. Right. It takes a lot of 25s to get to 3000 yeah. Yeah. Right. But we need, we need to see what, especially by the end of the year, we need if to it's see getting what used more, we thought it'd be used less. I know you would thought that, but no, she's got it booked up. So I the, think well into next year. It's not I'm too sorry. high, apparently. Normal. The normal. No, and I and I think the you know and I think the change that uh, that this body approved this morning for the uh, senior citizens building is actually going to drive more business, possibly to the expo, um, or possibly to the city, to the, the skating rink building. Who knows? But Okay. I doubt if they just want to clean up. Well, they want to be able to be in there till midnight. Some of those parties. They For do. sure. Yeah. Some of those parties. Uh, there's a lot more than you think that want it open till midnight. Yeah, there's. So. And they're using there's a lot of those type of parties. For midnight without alcohol? And they're, and they're using it because it's cheap. I know, but there's no alcohol. Well, I think that's part of the problem, too. I think that they've, they've had some law enforcement calls because of some alcohol consumptions in the parking lot and the things of that nature. Season. Some of those uh, going with late night parties as well. So I think that may clean up some of that as well. Um, IT, we were able to clean up and streamline some of that. Um, we obviously have our outside services provider uh, I've taken off the 14-4 for the data center. Um, I have left the 11,000 on there for email uh, begrudgingly. Uh, is he still sitting behind me? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. He, he knows what I'm talking about. So we've got many discussions. We'll be maybe uh, through some. We'll have some soft uh, email, email expense uh, through purchasing software, but. Um, it's not sustainable to do 11,000 a year for email. So um, that is uh, 
as he was working on that. And then again, uh, 80000 in the 570 account, which as Eddie gets uh, uh, able to go through and make specific recommendations, I expect that number to go down. I'll say it again, I expect that number to go down. Uh, <laughs> contingency account, uh, I've, I put it at 350000 uh, as a starting point. Uh, we were at 341 last year, and as you can see, we're already down to 168 uh, in using that, so I put it at 350. I've, uh, because of the requests that were noticeable through the conversations of our budget meetings, I've increased the security line item to 50,000. You know, the, the, the sad thing about security line is, is that really would not do, create much of a ripple. Uh, that stuff's expensive. Um, and, and I know and the other man. I know the argument on the other side is how much is one of our employees' lives worth, and, and I know that's that's not an argument any of us will want to win or, or quantify. I, I'm just saying I don't know how much to put in there, and I don't know what it would cost. And, and of course, if you know, I don't care if you spend five million dollars, if someone has determined to sacrifice their own life to create mayhem, they're going to succeed no matter what we have. Uh, so. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I put fifty in there. Uh, Ninety-five thousand for the land purchase. Uh, I, I know we only owe ninety uh, for the contract. However, we owe plus closing costs. So uh, I put ninety-five in there, uh, and then uh, we we continually do uh, capital improvements for the courthouse annex at a hundred thousand. And so I have left that there. Uh, to handle for uh, air conditioner replacements, things of that nature that affect this building and the historic courthouse. Uh, and then we, last year, uh, we uh, got direction from this body to set the subsidy for the two enterprise funds at 250 apiece. So that means our first run without any type of changes to payroll, uh, $13,291,000. About 900000 up from last year at this time. Yes, sir. At this time. At this time. Now, uh, golf course, uh, you know, I have not done any work on the revenue lines, uh, but you'll see that I have put in the 250. Um, have not, uh, you, can, you can look through those particular departments uh, on the enterprise funds to see the changes that they have requested. Uh, primarily, um, we've increased rental to 13000 because Jeff has worked out a deal where we're not buying some of those uh, pieces of equipment that we're actually just renting them, uh, which is saving us long term because he's only renting them during the season that he needs them and then turning them back. And then, of course, uh, the $245,000 in requested uh, uh, improvements there that are on that other sheet. Uh, Pro Shop, uh, he has requested, and in, uh, not requested, I've, I've increased his credit card fees from twenty-three dollars to $25,000 just from increased usage. Uh, the equipment furniture, that includes at the one seventy-four twenty-seven. that includes the uh, ten new carts that I've proposed in there, and then the mechanic. Uh, nothing has changed there. We, we've already purchased his uh, his truck, so nothing is, is necessary there. So uh, total expenditures right now, the golf course on this run is two million two fifty seven five seventy three. Likewise, on the Expo Center, the only revenue line I've got filled in is the two fifty coming from the general fund. Uh, the requested changes here, uh, as you can see, were for his uh, equipment furniture. Uh, and then I also had to increase his property insurance line item. Uh, his, his insurance bill came in uh, from tax at 31369 So I've uh, proposed on his budget 35000 for the coming year. Uh, he's requested a increase in the amount of uh, outside uh, work for the building cleaning uh, from 13.5 to 18.5. Uh, 
he requests he's requested an increase of equipment rental from five thousand to twenty thousand. But uh, his budget went from uh, one million one hundred six down to nine sixty nine eight forty eight, primarily because last year we had that lighting package uh, budget that was there. That's not. Good. Have we um, seen any reduction in electrical? Marginal. No, not, you know, I mean, the, 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 the main issue that, that I had with the, the lighting was that they took and oh, were applying yeah. that 20 proposed or projected 20% right. reduction right. on the total electricity right. bill. Changing LED lights didn't change air conditioning. Right. So, you know, so the. You know, are we seeing some reduction? Sure. Is it yeah. anything we're going to bank for? No. no. Now, to add insult to injury, uh, I know that we always like to do that. Uh, we need to uh, look at the uh, our taxes, where we are with tax. The preliminary uh, numbers that we have gotten from uh, the present district our taxable value of two billion two hundred eight oh forty five one sixteen at last year's rate that equates to a tax levy of ten million one ninety two one fifteen forty five. Last or our current year we had a taxable value of two two seven one two three eight eight twenty one which generated a tax levy of ten million four eighty three eight eleven twenty seven. So just on our preliminary numbers we're looking at a reduction of values of 63,193,705, which equates to $291,696 less money if we, with all things being equal, leaving our tax rate unchanged. And that's direct and proportional to the power plant. 200 what? 291,000. 696. 300,000. Yeah. What is that, 10 million what on this year's proposed? Uh, ten million one ninety two one fifteen forty five. Now I know I'm not going to be a very popular person in the room for what I'm about to say, but I wanted. I'm You've already upset the mind, so it's what, all right. what, What's that? I think that in any mind, so it's all right. Uh, you know, I have a food taster at home, so uh, I'm going to. Uh, start off the discussion saying that I'm going to recommend to this body a one cent increase this year. Uh, a one cent increase does a couple of three things. Uh, number one, we are all aware of the coming legislative session and the challenges that we'll be facing with Senator Betancourt and, and his uh, his mafia again. Virgo, Patrick, and Abbott. That we are going to have to take a defensive stance. Secondly, um, with that, um, you know, just off these preliminary numbers, our effective rate, and, you know, I don't want to get lost in the effective rate, but basically the effective rate, you can see last year, or this, this year, uh, the 10 million 483, 827, which is mirrored right here, the effective rate basically means how much would it take with these values for us to simply collect what we collected last year. And that actually comes out to 47.48006. So just to keep everything equal, just to keep and, and to replace, the, the, the problem I have with Betancourt by, you know, and, and nobody enjoys talking about a penny tax increase. And, and certainly I would put myself in front of the list. You all know that my other life I invest in real estate and those things have to be fed with taxes. So a penny is a penny on me, too. However, um, we don't get any credit for the, the good intentions and the good acts that this court does year after year of making it work and just simply stomaching those, those property tax reduction values and keeping the rate the same. Unfortunately, I can't go back and say, well, let's take the, the property value decrease that we had last year and add it to this year and come up with my new effective rate so that I can make it work. The the effective rate calculation only looks at the prior year. So what happens when next year 
we have an uptick. We, we say this body chooses to not change the tax rate. We, we, we don't even want to go with that penny. So basically, we just wipe off that two hundred and ninety-one thousand dollars in tax. But and then next year, the we do see a little bit of an in, increase. Um, hopefully, not because of anything I'm building, but we see an increase. <laughs> well, we can't go back and say, "Well, give me that two ninety-one back." The, the the calculation says, "Forget it. You forgave it. It's gone." And we don't get to go back and But if there's an increase, you'll have an increase. No, it's going to force our rate down. Yeah. In fact, your rate flip. it flips. That's what happens. That's what happens. That's why the your rate down. bites us in the rear. Yeah, but you'll be collecting more taxes no, because sir. the value goes up. No, sir. That's what, that's what they're trying, to, and that's why they're prohibiting what they're prohibiting. That's... Because that's what other large entities or large counties do, like Harris County, where they have these great, massive building projects and big neighborhoods go in, and their portfolio goes up by billions of dollars, and then they say, well, we didn't raise our tax rate. Well, but they raised the amount of taxes they collected. And that's what they're, that's what they're after, and they're going to catch us in that same net. So that's why I've got to protect them. And that's why I'm recommending the penny. And where the court's got to be careful on down the road is Ben Court's probably going to get his way this year to 4%. Abbott's going after 2.5%. So 4% for us is what, like opinions 1.6? I mean, you can see. It's yeah, not quite I mean, two pennies. So if he gets his way and they pass it next year, then the 2020 folks, I mean, we'll be limited no matter what we do. And but then you what, what you're don't. talking about, what you're trying to pass, is you, you won't be able to raise your taxes high enough. Yes, no, exactly. Without an automatic, Without and it's not even, it's, you don't even have, have, have to do the petition. If it gets in the way, election. yeah, you won't even have to get to do the petition anymore. It'll be an automatic, where we have to hold the rollback election, and we have to pay for that election no matter what. Trying to sell pictures of me and spandex would be easier than oh, selling, selling no, no, a no. rollback <laughs> election, okay? So... Well, you know how to change the movie. Well, <laughs> you just threw out a bad picture. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't going to get rid of that for hours. <laughs> but anyhow, back to the problem at hand. Is our boys in Austin not doing us any favors? So I, I, you know, I wanted to get with you guys to let you know that you know, I'm recommending a penny. And even at a penny, look what that increases. $220,000. And even the penny does not replace what we're going to stomach as a reduction, um, you know, from just the values. It just helps sustain us. And it keeps our levy at that $10 million plus where we need to be. Where does that put us in comparison with all the other rates in the state? We are... We were pretty low. I think there's about 25 out of 254 that's below us right now. You can't get rid of gold by rates. I had that last year. Value of land. Well, rates and some, rates not right, and, and a lot of counties will have two or three different tax rates. They'll have they'll separate their road and bridge rate out from their other county government rates and, and things. Uh, Most of your counties' rates higher than ours, I think, but their value of their land is not compared to ours. So you, it's the value. You know, we are, you know, I, one of the things I watch every year when the report comes out from the appraisal district is I love seeing, um, it's going to be kind of hard to see. Um, let me see if I can increase it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know what he's trying to see. <laughs> I'm sorry. The screen? Uh, new. Um, you know, when we talk about new uh, improvements here, you know, look at this number. You know, we've, we've had $2 million in new improvements this year come into the county. Uh, new non-homestead land, uh, $90,000 where it was taken off of. Uh, the new non-home site uh, uh, numbers uh, is, is really a, a good number, plus the new home site land. We're coming out of, of ag. Uh, those are some good numbers there. So we're seeing some new activity year in, year out that we have. Um, in fact, you, took, you take the new home site and the new non-home site, you know, we've got about $16 million of improvements here that are coming on the roll this year. Um, and some will have inventory associated with them. 
Now, that's a help. Right. Now, you know, the, the judge's new place, that's $10 million of it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's really good. But, that would um, kick back. But, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we've watched this, and this, you know, what this represents is a, is a couple of things for us as a as a body. Number one, you know, this is this is new improvements, obviously, coming in. This does not even take into account tractor supply because they were not open January 1 and those type of things. But as we do more and more improvements in the industrial park, uh, things get online out there. Uh, but these represent more citizens coming to the area. They're going to want more services. And, you know, register vehicles. I mean, there, there's a there's a cascading effect uh, utilizing the court systems, uh, you know, all of those things. We lost so, 200 million on the power plant, which will regain some of that next January 1st, hopefully. You know, a couple of things that have got me encouraged is that this president sent an order to the Department of Energy uh, ceasing and stopping all new or any planned nuclear and coal shutdowns um, in the United States. And the second part of that uh, presidential order was a directive to energy companies, they must purchase energy from nuclear power plants. So, hey, I'm all for it. Uh, we have been seeing some small upticks in the wholesale energy prices. Encore, uh, excuse me, uh, ERCOT is projecting a shortage of energy this summer, which you know, when the shortage happens, that's when those price per kilowatt hours go through the roof. And we base our value on that average kilowatt price over the course of a year. So, you know, the more days with those high ticks. Well, it ought to happen this summer. Yeah. So, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, that, unfortunately, it's not going to help us in this Not budget. this year. 1920 might be better. You're recommending a, a penny. That's okay. my recommendation. But that doesn't even recapture the loss. That's correct. In, in order to recapture the uh-huh. loss, you'd be looking but at But we haven't right. figured in a COLA or anything on this spreadsheet. That's correct. So. Uh, but, you know, just real live numbers, okay? I've got you a $13 million budget where we are right now. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's going to go down. However, you know, tax is the largest funding source of that budget. We have other revenue lines, but those other revenue lines combined are about $1.5 million. So, you know, I mean, you know, it, it's real. It's real easy to see that you know I'm, I'm sitting at about 12 maybe in total income, and budget's 13. So we've got a lot of shaving to do, and there's a lot of gap to make. Even yeah. with the one. Even with the one. Yes, sir. So, uh, again, we we we've, we've got time before we have to post our proposed rate for public consumption, but I wanted to lay it out there so that each one of you could start getting your arms around that, and let's walk in it through. I don't see our emergency people sitting back here so much. Sorry. $55,000 back. All yeah. they've done is the office that they put in, the fence they put up, and the manor talk to them. I thought they hadn't made any other progress. I we, think they have finished their fight with the city, I hope. I think that is done. And we've been back channeling to get that CD raised. Yeah. So we can get that yeah. back. Get our 55000 back now. That's still in my bottom drawer if you ever need the receipt. I the left hand side bottom drawer. I've, yeah. I've got a long answer to your question. No, that's all that I need. need to be at the end of the year and get the date here and help you on the end of the year. Yeah, be not January 1st. Get them on tax rolls January the first. I'm with you. And as far as, you know, as you well know, I, I think uh, us and possibly the Water District, if I'm not mistaken, were the only two entities that did not have a tax increase last year. Um, I mean, the, the, you may have been the only one. The, the, city, the city did 
a city did a bet in court. They had an increase in values and kept their rate the same. I'm wondering what it down to. Yeah, you're right. I know the hospital went up significantly and the school went up. And the city had a net tax increase because of their effective rate went down. The state's always leaning on the school to go up more and more and more. Yeah, the state's not going to let our school district alone until they're north of a dollar. They're really burnt because ours is south of that number. But I know as you talk with other commissioners, I mean, there are commissioners that are counties, you know, really struggling. Some are bumping up against the 80 cent statutory limit. So I still feel very fortunate where we are to be talking about in the 40s, although we're approaching that 50 cent number. We're still, we've still got to move away from that. I think you gentlemen up here are looking to adjourn on you. I know that that's a buzzkill, my last thing. So that's why I saved it for last. But, you know, you know, we've we've explored different things. One of the things I explored for the sheriff's office is possibly instead of cars, you know, we could do something like that. Alan's got his head, his head buried in his hand back there. Are they requesting that? No, I've requested it. But, you know, I haven't got any takers yet. But I thought it was a good system. I mean, all in one. Pretty good. Seems like it. Certainly would work for the SRO officers in high school and stuff, I would think. So, yeah. But anyway, I was, I was dared to show it. So I did. I didn't think you'd do it. I know. I did. Okay, so we can talk about it in budget, I guess. I don't know where the sheriff, the cameras over here at the thrift store. Do you know anything about that? Or is that the one, the chief? Yeah, Dwayne sent me a picture of one that we try to get the city to put up. Chester and I was having those negotiations as Chester left. So I guess I'll start over somebody else. You know, that would be in and of itself a significant line item. You know, if the county actually ticketed that, the city has indicated no desire to pursue those tickets. So we'll take them. You know. You're talking about all the junk that gets dumped out in front that we pick up every morning? I don't think it would take that many tickets before it would be flying all over Facebook and maybe the message would get out. But, you know, illegal dumping certainly does carry a pretty hefty fine. Yeah, they have to dump it in somewhere else out in the county. Or you don't have a camera. Anything else from any folks? You need a motion. I need a motion. I need a motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. I have a second. You have a second? I have a second by Don. We will have all in favor. That's 5 for, 0 against, 11.46 a.m. on June the 11th. First budget workshop. Thank you, Brian. Yes, sir. Thank you, Eddie. The first of your last one, Commissioner Curtis and Commissioner.